we have essential boundary conditions, which we and we have natural boundary conditions, right? Essential boundary conditions works by restricting the space for which we can have the solution. Natural boundary conditions doesn't restrict the space; it comes out naturally from the weak form. What type of boundary conditions did we set in the two-dimensional example we just uh, went through? Essential. Essential, because we are restricting the space. We're removing degrees of freedoms on the boundary, right? So, so let's, uh, so let's also discuss what we can do for natural boundary conditions. So we have the gradient of the divergence of gradient of u plus f equal to zero. We cannot have natural boundary. We cannot have the uh, Newman's boundary condition everywhere. So, so let's say we have split the domain into two parts. This is partial omega one, partial omega two. So let's say u at partial omega one is equal to zero. And uh, how do we set the Newman boundary condition on um, the other uh, domain? We set it as the normal dot with the gradient of u equal to zero. Okay. So so this is usually, for example, if you are solving a heat transfer problem, this is saying that, and u is the solution of the temperature. This is saying that I'm fixing the temperature in this part of the domain. For example, I'm having this in contact with the with the uh, with the heat source or heat sink that maintains that boundary to be a constant temperature. While on omega, partial omega 2, on the other side of the boundary, I have the gradient of the heat dot with the normal equal to zero. What does that mean if I have a heat transfer problem? Yes? The flux is equal to zero, which means no heat goes through the boundary. It's insulated on the other side. Right, so so these are the two types of boundary conditions we, we can set uh, a digital and uh, a Newman boundary condition. Of course, you can set this to be non-zero to a certain other value. That means I'm giving a fixed heat flux through the boundary. Okay, so so how do we set this type of boundary conditions? It turns out if you derive the weak form, it'll come out naturally. So. The weak form works by integrating the equation with uh, the product of a test function. And through integration by parts, this came out to be V times N dot with the grad of U, right, at the boundaries minus uh, the weak form we had before. And this boundary term is it is zero for partial omega one because we restrict the space and therefore V is going to be zero at the boundary. It is going to be zero at partial omega two because the grad u dot n should satisfy the Newman boundary condition, right? So that means we don't need to do anything at partial omega two other than not restricting the space to set it to zero, okay? In order for you to satisfy that Newman boundary condition. So, for example, in the code, let's do a very simple thing. Remember, uh, I said uh, this E, the boundary E, is uh, has a flag at the very end. Uh, so, so here, this this five, I think it corresponds to which edge it is. So, so for example, if uh, if I plot the plot uh, the p of x direction, e of so 0 to 5, uh, e of 1, 1 to 5, so this is the first edge, 
and uh, uh, is that right? Second dimension. So this is a one by. Okay, so then I should do p of one and e of two, one to five. So this is the x direction of. I'm just plotting the first five edges corresponding to the flag five equal to one, and uh, the y direction. What I'm gonna get is this. Uh, that's weird. Oh, I have another bunch of ones over there. Uh -huh. So, so instead of one to five, I should be setting setting e of five equal to one. So I'm just going to remove this one to five by this flag. Uh, I have one more thing I need to replace, I guess. Right, so that's one of the straight edges. So let's take an example of setting one of these straight edges to, to a Newman boundary condition. Okay. The only thing we have to do is to remove this, is to do a little bit trick on the IB, right? So we did, uh, we figured out IB was equal to all these, um, all, all these edges, right? So now we want to remove a certain set of points from IB. So we want to remove the. Uh, okay. So let's only so so let's only keep so so to make it easier. Let's only let's do Newman boundary condition to all the edges except for one of the edges. So we are going to set it to e of uh, five star equal to one. So we are going to we are going to set IB, which is the value, which is the basic functions we restrict to zero, only for the points along the first edge. So now IB is going to be a much lower dimension. Uh, it's much less number of points. It only has eleven points. So we are going to set a zero Dirichlet boundary condition only on these eleven points, and all the other boundary conditions we just uh, don't do anything to it. And according to our analysis on the natural boundary condition, the boundary conditions naturally satisfied on the other points should be what? Should be a zero Newman boundary condition, right? So now we have modified the IB and let's run this again. And this obviously ran. And uh, let's do a try surf of this time. All right. So that's the solution we get. Uh, obviously, we are satisfying a zero Dirichlet boundary condition on this particular edge, right? So, so that's the edge that we set, still included in the set of IBs. And all the other boundary conditions, let's actually look at the edge on to make it a, a little bit more obvious that. So we are, act, for example, on the, we are looking at the left edge over here, right? So from this particular point of view, we are actually satisfying the normal derivative equal to zero condition. The derivative in normal to this edge should be on the horizontal direction when I view it at this angle, right? The horizontal direction, the derivative is equal to zero. If I rotate it again, look at this edge from edge on, the normal derivative is also going to be equal to zero. So for any of these other edges, if you look at the normal, the derivative normal to that edge, it's going to be zero. So that's how we are satisfying a natural boundary condition, right? Questions on this one? Yes? So the, the, um, the second equation on this page, yes. where does that minus come from? Oh, the minus comes from integration by parts. So, so the minus comes from the fact that if, uh, so the integration by, by parts comes from taking V times gradient of U. So V is a scalar, gradient of U is a vector. Right, so this is a vector. So let's define this as a vector. Uh, duh, 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 duh. 
So let's define this as a w. So it's a vector, right? So so if I apply a Gauss's theorem on this vector, which is Gauss theorem on this vector, which means that uh, the divergence of the vector integrated over the whole domain should be equal to the normal outward normal times the vector integrated over the boundary of the domain, right? Oh, by the way, thanks for uh, notifying this. This is, as opposed to the one-dimensional integrating by parts, the two-dimensional integrating by parts is going to give me a boundary integral. So this term needs to be integrated not in the interior, but over the boundary. So this is ds, or over the, uh, the, edge, the edge of the boundary. So, so the interior divergence integral is equal to the boundary normal dot vector integral. And uh, then if I substitute the particular form of w into both left and right hand side, the left hand side becomes uh, the divergence of the product of a scalar and the vector is equal to two terms. This is equal to the gradient of the vector, dot product with the the vector that is already inside, which is grad of u, plus v, which is the scalar, times the times the divergence of the vector that is already inside, which is grad of u. All right. So this is just a chain rule for uh, for vector calculus. And uh, so this is the left hand side, and the right hand side is we also substitute this w, and that becomes v. I just the v is a scalar, so I put it in front and dot with grad of u ds. So so this is becoming our formula for integration by parsing two D, which is basically taking this on the left hand side and this on the right hand side and this on the right hand side. Okay, so it says that the left hand side, the integration of V times the Laplacing of a scalar U is gonna be the boundary integral, the first term on the right hand side, V n dot grad U dS minus integration over uh, the whole domain, so that's the first term on the left hand side, uh, grad v dot grad u dx. So that's our formula for integration by parsing 2D. That is going to help us derive all these equations.